With diode lasers, faster engraving and cutting is more achievable than ever. With Atomstax X7 Pro, we have not only this, but more accessibility options to open up laser engraving to hobbyists and those looking to do a small business from it. I'm James Hertz from MUO, and we're gonna talk about Amstax X7 Pro and whether it suits your needs and if it deserves the title of Amstax flagship laser engraver. So let's talk about setup for the Amstack X7 Pro. Now it's designed to be quickly put together with Amstack estimating between 10 and 20 minutes for actual setup. Now this is true if you're someone who's experienced putting these kinds of machines together, but if this is your first time, you could expect it to take a little more. Now your slowdown won't come as much when assembling the frame or doing things like adjusting the belts, but some of the more obscure concepts like the mounting brackets for the actual laser head and how they fall into effect with your laser focus or some slight off-putting things like an odd place to plug in or where to efficiently put the zip ties for the cables can slow you down. Now, one thing I do specifically want to mention is when they do advise that you take a moment to test the tightening of the eccentric nuts on the unit, that you do so. Once you believe you have them tight enough, Amstack advises that you lift the unit at a 45 degree angle relative to the horizontal plane and tilt the unit such that it goes and slides at a constant speed. This is important just to test that the laser is stable and moving so you don't have any accidents when actually starting your first job. So let's talk about reasons to consider the Atomstack X7 Pro. First off, it is not just an ordinary 5 watt laser engraver, it is a 10 watt dual laser output machine. Now what this means is two lasers are combined into one which provides more power and stability and this brings different benefits. First off, in terms of lowering the focus area, you can get it down to 0.06 millimeters for more fine image engraving. Now also in terms of numbers for engraving, it's faster there too. So with a 10 watt laser engraver with the X7 Pro, you can achieve 11,000 millimeters per minute with five watt laser engravers getting something like 3,500 millimeters a minute. Now there's also benefits and improvements to cutting speed with the X7 Pro cutting at 40% more than ordinary machines. In terms of other things to look out for, it does have a very large working area at 410 by 400 millimeters, which is also expandable, and you have a fixed focus area. So what this means is when you're actually getting your focus for the laser, it's a very simple process. At the front of the laser is an adjustment knob, so when you have what you want engraved, you simply hover the actual laser over it and then slide in the fixed focus piece and loosen the adjustment knob and drop the laser. From this this point all you have to do is tighten the knob and then pull out the fixed focus piece and you're in focus and ready to go. Overall the X7 Pro brings a lot of accessibility options and opens up different options so we're going to break down some of these more in detail and see how they can benefit you. Let's move on to talking about some of the safety features of the Amstack X7 Pro. First off there are limit switches on both the X and Y axis so you can prevent any collisions with actual laser head during operation. In terms in terms of other things, you can look at the control module at the front. There are three quick access buttons. There's an emergency shutdown button, a power button, as well as a reset button. Now during actual use, when I did have the laser engraver hooked up via USB, I never really felt a need to press these buttons. Instead, I was much more comfortable simply stopping or pausing via light burn. But if you are doing something like working offline with a touch screen, this can be a much faster response, especially considering actual laser engraver is fairly Fairly lightweight and if you have it set up just so it may accidentally get nudged. So again if you do press the emergency shutdown button for instance you're going to need to twist to unlock it. Now if you aren't able to use the touch screen straight out of the box you also want to check if this button has accidentally been pressed and twist it to release it if so. Now another safety measure is there is a horizontal gyroscope installed on the unit so if you do tilt the unit then it's immediately going to shut down so this can prevent things like the laser causing damage in case of a fall. So let's talk about eye protection since this is a laser engraver. Now the X7 Pro comes with a panoramic filter glass which blocks around 97% of ultraviolet light. But you do want to be prepared in case some things go awry, such as if the laser hits a reflective surface, if it goes past, say, your work 
working area. Now, towards this end, I did wear OD5 plus protective laser glasses, so I was safe even when looking at the laser up close for things like knowing it's laser pathing. Now, you also want to keep in mind what materials you're going to be working with. Now, for testing, I mostly use plywood at different thickness levels, as well as some bamboo and glass. Now, none of these are especially problematic, but you're still going to be dealing with some smoke and some particles in the air. And the X7 Pro does not come with an exhaust system, so you're going to need some kind of ventilation. Now, this is not only going to produce cleaner results, but also protect you from things like possible respiratory irritation. Now, also when working with X7 Pro, I did use a respirator just because I'm used to it from 3D printing, and I did use an air purifier in the room to help with some of the smell. Ultimately, you're going to need to do what you feel most comfortable with and suits your home. So let's talk about some software options for the X7 Pro. Now with Atomstack, they do support Laser GRBL as a free option, but it is more leaning towards Windows users. Now you can run it on Mac, OS, or Linux, but there are more steps to get to that point. Now there is also the universal option of Lightburn, but it is a paid option that does originally come with a free trial. Now, I did use Laser GRBL simply to test the movement of the device, install some custom buttons, as well as actually install drivers for the device. But overall, beyond that, I much preferred Lightburn in terms of visual clarity with things like color coding different layers and just better management for my jobs. Now, ultimately, you need to work with what you're most comfortable with, and there is a lot of support and information on both software types. But overall, I would recommend Lightburn when using the X7 Pro. So what if you don't want to be attached all the time to the X7 Pro with a USB cable and something like your laptop? Now, at the front control module is a magnetically attached 3.5 inch HD touchscreen controller. Now, this allows for offline engraving and cutting, but there are some steps to be able to do this. First off, you do need to export your actual projects via Lightburn or LaserGRBL to an SD card. Now the X7 Pro comes with a USB stick that does have an SD card inserted into it, so you can use this and then put it into your actual controller whenever you're ready to do offline engraving jobs. So how does that actually pan out? Now the controller itself does have a nice ergonomic grip and feels nice in hand, but the actual operation is a bit hit and miss. Now, first off, there are some minor spelling errors in terms of the actual touchscreen controls, and I did find them to require a few double presses when actually using it, but the actual process does work really well. So when you do have your job loaded up, you can set your number of laser passes, as well as adjust things like speed and power during actual operation, and adjust the values when increasing or decreasing them in terms of different percentages. Now, for offline engraving, I would typically do it with jobs that I have already successfully completed via light burn, but you may find this to be different for your own uses. Now also with the touchscreen controller, there is the option to connect via Wi-Fi. Now there isn't much reason to do it at this stage. The actual web features are still under development by Amstack, but if you do attach your Wi-Fi connection here and do connect, you can still enter your IP address via a browser and go into a specific interface. Now the interface with what's currently available via GitHub just allows allows you to move the X7 laser as well as access things like your SD card. Overall, it's not particularly useful, but you can do it. Now, I do want to note some things about the Wi-Fi otherwise, though. If you do enter your Wi-Fi password and you turn the Amstack X7 Pro on and off, you're going to have to re-enter it multiple times. Now, when actually using the keypad to enter your Wi-Fi password, this can be more of an endeavor than necessary with the relatively small keyboard that pops up. So again, not much reason to use Wi-Fi at this stage, but it is there if you do want to explore early on. So with the X7 Pro, let's start by talking about the results on the engraving side. Now for a sample test, I took one of the included wooden pieces and just did a very quick engraving of one of the sample images included on the SD card. But from there, I want to do something different than the typical photograph engraving that you typically start art with, so I tried different degrees of artwork. Now I took a very simple vectored Adobe Illustrator file and did that first. It took around three and a half hours and I was overall impressed with the actual translation of the line work. Now also I wanted to do some more complicated artworks. So when I went from there, I decided to try two different types. 
Now the first one came up as a pure image layer in Lightburn. Now I did this on a 12 by 12 inch piece of wood so it was larger and I could display more of the overall image. This job took around nine hours and it even had some nice relief work on the edges with the actual framing here. Now from there I want to do a more complicated multi-layer art piece. So again, I took a 12 by 12 inch block and got this. Now when it was imported into Lightburn from Illustrator, what I got was multiple line cuts as well as a image engraving layer. Now I got a lot of nice intricate relief work on specific parts such as the trees and overall I was able to see the detail and how well it was captured via the X7 Pro. So if you're wanting to work with a laser engraver that can capture really fine detail, I have been really impressed with the laser engraving results so far. Now on the engraving front there's another thing I do want to note. It is a very powerful laser so sometimes when you are working smaller you can run into some potential scenarios where you might get more of a burn result if you're not careful with your power setting. Now as a quick cut as well as an engrave test I did make some very small crow cutouts which did have some issue with burning. When I ran at around 40% power they looked a little too overdone and I ended up having to drop it to 20%. Similarly, when I was engraving on bamboo, I had to drop it from 30% because I was getting some burning at the top part of the results and had to drop it to around 25%. As with any laser engraving job, once you do figure out the actual ideal settings, this isn't much of an issue. You can simply replicate the job from there, but it is another small thing to keep in mind. So let's move on to cutting with the X7 Pro. Now there are some things noted by Adam Stack, such as the ability to cut 20 millimeters of wood, as well as 15 millimeters of acrylic. Now there are some things to keep in mind about this being an obtainable result. It's not something you're going to get with the base unit. Now specifically to test it, I did a few things. First off, I did use a honeycomb when cutting and then I did a very basic circle cut test. Now to actually get that degree of thickness, I started by taping together multiple two millimeter pieces of wood. Specifically for this test, I did eight millimeters taped together. Now what I found was in a reasonable amount of passes, I wasn't getting towards that arena. Specifically, I cut in intervals of five, seven, eight, 10, and 12 passes at full 100% power and just a standard 1000 millimeters a minute move speed. Now with a diode laser you have to keep in mind that you need high power and a slow cutting speed to get really proper results. Now as a quick cutting test what I got in terms of results was I was getting towards the 6 millimeter cut range when going towards the higher pass count but it wasn't slow enough for that end. Now when I did do it for longer passes at a slower speed I did have to worry about burning and possible flames coming out because you really need an air assist when you are cutting with the X7 Pro. Now if you aren't working with something like really soft wood again I really do recommend an air assist. Now the X7 Pro did not release with its own air assist system and Amstack has instead released that separately later but again there are other options. The community has some DIY air assist systems and you can see what they're doing if you're not wanting to specifically purchase from Amstack. But overall when cutting to get cleaner results and to deal with possible obstructions that could lead to small flames or other get too crispy in terms of results, I would recommend an air assist. Now in terms of other cutting jobs, there are a few things I tried. First off, I did a very simple design with a spatula just to test how quickly I could cut something out in a few passes, but I noticed it was charring a little more than I wanted. So for other test results, I wanted to try something where there was cutting and assembly involved, so I did two relatively easy jobs. First off, I did a small wooden insect puzzle which provided the opportunity to really test how quickly I could cut between many multi-piece projects and whether there was going to be charring. Now with the X7 Pro, it's a good idea if you're not using something like an air assist to potentially up the laser's travel speed between different parts if you want to avoid charring. So when you're spacing something in your software like Lightburn, this can be a helpful option. Now another thing I did was cut a box, but not just any box. I want to do some intricate actual connection points on it, as well as to engrave each of the different 
faces. Now with X7 Pro, this was a relatively easy job, and there again wasn't much charring as long as I kept the passes higher and I didn't have the power too high. Overall, I do feel like an air assist is something you're really going to want to have if you're working with X7 Pro on bigger jobs or deeper cutting jobs. But overall, for any hobby uses and some small business uses, I wasn't too bothered without it. So the question now is, should you purchase Adam Stack's X7 Pro? Now, if you compare it to something like the X-Tool D1, which is more expensive and doesn't offer something like offline engraving, there's a lot of value in the actual base budget price of the unit. Now, if you're looking Looking at eventually building up towards other uses, a lot of accessories are sold separately for the X7 Pro, but you can buy these at your own pace. Now, what I do want to note is I like it that you can really focus more on the area that you're more passionate about when you are purchasing separate accessories. So if you're wanting to do more things like engraving, you can purchase the rotary or do something like the extension kit so you can have a larger work area. But if you're more concerned about something like cutting, you may look at something like the actual full case for the unit with an exhaust fan or possibly just the air assist system. So however you're working with the X7 Pro, there's a variety of safety features and conveniences that you can have simply because of how Adam Stack built the laser engraver. Overall, I found it relatively easy to use and very safe to use. So if you're after something that's both budget conscious and you can use more towards your intended goal of purchase, whether you're a hobbyist or a business owner, the X7 Pro offers a lot of value. So I want to thank Adam Stack for providing the X7 Pro testing unit and for you watching, feel free to like and subscribe and leave any questions that you have below and if you want to read a more in-depth written review make sure to head over to makeuseof.com